what we're going to be going through here are compensated absences. Now those are absences here from employment. What we mean by that here is where the employee is going to get paid by the company here for vacation days, sick pay here, and holidays. And what the company has to do is they must accrue a liability for the cost of the compensation for future absences if all of the following conditions here are met. And uh, what we mean by accrue here is they're going to have the company has to set up a payable here and they have to record it here on a balance sheet and they have to record it as an expense here on the income statement for these compensated absences. Now the conditions, let's go back to the conditions that have to be met here. Number one, the obligation to receive a compensation for future absences is for services already rendered. Number two, the obligation relates to the rights that vest or accumulate. Three, the payment for compensation here is probable. And four, the amount, the amount can be reasonably estimated here. So we're just going to be going through a basic example here where we're going to be looking at vacation days and sick days here where each employee is going to be given 10 vacation vacation days here per year and they're also going to be given six sick days here per year. And what we have to know um, for this example, any example here that we're when we're doing these calculations, we have to know what the wage rate here is and we're going to be looking at an hourly basis here and we're going to be looking at two years here, 20x1 and 20x2. And the wage rate here is $24 per hour for 20x1 and for 20x2 it's $26 per hour. And then the vacation days used, we have to know that here. For 20x1, zero vacation days here and for 20x2 it's nine days here. And these are on a, a per employee basis or an average per employee here. And then for the six days used here, 20x1, uh, they're going to have used four days here. Um, per employee and then for 20x2 is five days here for employee. Now when we're trying determining these compensated uh, absences or these costs here we have to determine what the wages payable would be here and the best way to do that is to just to set up this table here so we have to uh, set it up here for each of the years here 20x1 here and 20x2 and we're looking at our vacation pay here and also our sick pay um, that for the total amount here for each of the employees here and what you would do is you set up your table here you begin with the beginning balance here at the beginning of the year here you add in what's accrued here for the year here and you subtract out what you paid here for the year and then that gives you your ending balance here at the end of the year here and that ending balance at the end of the year becomes the beginning balance of the next year here so let's just go through uh, first year here for our vacation pay well uh, this corporation here started on January 1st so we'll just start with that and so there is no beginning balance here in either the vacation or the sick pay here so the accrued amount here here for 20x1 what we would do each employee was given uh, 10 days here per year and let's just go and look at our calculations here so we have nine employees at this company here and we they average eight hours per day and the labor rate here for the first year is $24 per hour and then they are given 10 vacation days here each of those here so you multiply all those out here and you're going to come up with an accrued amount here of $17,280 for our nine employees here and what was paid out well there were zero vacation days here for the first year and uh, starting with our beginning balance here of zero uh, so adding in our accrued amount nothing paid out our ending balance here is seventeen thousand two hundred and eighty dollars okay moving over to our sec pay again same reasoning here beginning balance zero now the accrued amount here remember we're dealing with nine employees here eight hour days times twenty four dollars here per hour for their first year and they are giving six days here each employee so that comes up that amount here would be ten thousand three hundred and sixty eight dollars now what was paid out here if we go back to our chart you'll see the days here they used up four days here per employee so paid out here at the twenty four dollars twenty four dollars here per hour at the rate here for that first year here, eight hours, nine employees, you're going to come up with $6,912 here that was paid out. So to determine our ending balance, easy enough. Beginning zero, the, the, the accrued amount here, add in the accrued amount, subtract out what's paid, and you're going to come up with an ending balance here of $3,456. Now you can also look at it in these terms here. You got the nine employees, eight hours per day, $24, $24 here per hour, but uh, and what's remaining here? Well, they were given six days here uh, per employee, but they only use four, so there's two days 
remaining here. So you multiply that out and you're going to come up with your same number here of $3,456. That's just a cross check and gives you some reasoning here on how you come, uh, how, how this ending balance uh, would be determined here just based on the remaining days here. Now, uh, looking at 20x2, the vacation days, uh, the beginning balance is simply the ending balance from year 20x1 here is 17,280. And then the accrued amount, well, we're accruing it at the new labor rate here of $26 um, dollars per hour. So if you just work it out here, the same number, nine employees, eight hours per day. Again, at $26 per hour, you're going to come up with $18,720. Now, they're also getting paid out here at uh, $26 per hour. So if you work out the vacation that, that they used here uh, for year 20x2 here, uh, nine days here per year, you're going to come up with $15,500. $52. So your net amount here, beginning your beginning balance plus what was accrued here, less what was paid out, you're going to come up with $20,448 here for your ending balance here at 1231 for uh, 20x2 here. Now you can all... So look at it in this reasoning here, so you get some understanding here. Um, again, you nine employees, eight hours per day, twenty-four dollars per hour. Remember, there's one day that's carried over here at this old labor rate here of twenty-four dollars. You use uh, per hour. You use ten days here. Oh, well, you had 10 days, you used 9, so there was 1 remaining. So that multiplies out here. Plus, you would add in what hadn't, uh, you got the next year's um, um, accrued amount here. 9 employees, same numbers here. But you use 26 hours. The new labor rate here is 26 hours per day here times, again, 10 days they're given here for the year. So you add up, dole up all these amounts. If you do the arithmetic, you're going to come up with the same figure here, $20,448 here. So you should understand what's going on here uh, instead of just using your chart. The chart's easy enough to figure out, but also understand the reasoning here. Now, uh, sick pay, the same thing. Beginning balance is simply what was carried over from the ending balance of the previous year here. Accrued uh, amount, you're doing that at now $26 per hour. You come up with that amount here. And then what was paid out. Uh, for sick pay, uh, it was five days here that was paid out uh, times the current rate here of $26 per hour. And you're going to come up with, with, with averaging your employees and your hours. And at, again, at $26 per hour here, you're going to come up with $9,072. So netting your amounts here, your beginning balance plus what was accrued minus what's paid out, you're going to come up with your ending balance here at $5,616. Now, you can also look at it in these terms here. Again, you got your number of employees, eight hours per day. Again, at the new labor rate here of $26 per hour. Now, remember, they were given six days here for the first year, six days here for the second year. They used four days here in the first year here, and they used five days here in in the second year. So netting your amount out, 12 minus 9 here, you're going to come up with three days here. That's uh, remaining here. And times your new labor rate times eight hours per day times nine employees, you're going to come up with the same amount here of $5,616. So that's the arithmetic here behind be it for your ending balance here. So just remember, you set up this chart here, you begin with your bidding balance, determine what the accrued amount is here, subtract out what was paid here, at, and you have to know at what labor rates and the amounts that you're doing that, and then you can determine your ending balance, which becomes your beginning balance of the next year here. All right, so that takes care of the arithmetic here. Now let's go and look at our journal entries here. First off, let's start here or we accrue this liability. I'm not going to go through all the numbers that come right off the uh, chart that we worked at here. So you have to set up your vacation wages payable here on your balance sheet here and that would increase that here, credit that here for any of the payables and I'm, I'm showing them for each year here. And you also set, set up your sick pay uh, wages payable here on your balance sheet here. And when you accrue these liabilities here through your pay, wages payable here uh, what you do is you recognize them here as a wages expense here on your income statement. So this would be the, your accrued expense. So when you accrue them here on your payable on your balance sheet here, you recognize them as expense here on your 
income statement here, and I'm showing it for both the vacation and the sick pays. We can go through these numbers here, and I just want to point out some things here. But, okay, so when you have your payable, you credit your payable here, you debit your accrued expense here on your income statement for those amounts here. And we, you could go through all those numbers here, you do the same here, your credit, your sick days payable here, you recognize them as a expense here on your income statement. And uh, what one thing that we want to point out here, and we'll do that right away here, um, you're going to have an extra, you'll come up with an extra balance here, and you'd have to come up, when you do your individual years, you come up with your debits and credits, and you're going to come up with an extra balance here, an extra expense. And what that amounts to is you have to watch for this here. You're going to be paid wages here uh, at the current rate, which would be greater than the accrued expense. So you're going to come up with some extra expense here because of that those, that arithmetic here. Now what we want to do here is look at when uh, the payment here is actually made to the employee and what we do is we would in this case we would credit or reduce our cash here for whatever payment is made here to the employee and then on our payables what we would do is we would just debit our payable by that amount here of whatever the for that of amount. Reduce our repayables and then we rec reduce our cash by the amount. Now that's when the employee is actually paid here. So let's just look at 20x1 here. So let's well, let's just look at our uh, credits to cash. 69, 12, 15, 52 here and 9,072 here. Uh, what I mean by 15,552 here and 9,072 here. So on our wages payable you can just match these up here. So we would have credited our wages Wages payable and just 15,552 here. That's for 20x2 here. And then our sick pay here, we had two amounts here $6,912 for 20x1. That was payable. We reduced our payable because we paid it out to the employees. And then 9,072 here for 20x2 here. So we could go through all our numbers here, but that's just I want to point out here we accrue this liability here and that comes off our chart that we looked at or we created here for our wages and a uh, payable here for both the vacation and the sick days here and then when we accrue them we recognize them here as an, an expense on our income statement and then when we actually make the cash payment here to the employees then we would reduce our cash here and then we also uh, reduce our accrued liability here for in this case uh, wage uh, vacation wages here or sick pay wages. All right, so that just a rough example here on how you would go about uh, accounting for compensated absences here. And remember, you must the accrue the liability here, and you, we have those four uh, conditions that we had to have met here when we make this accrual. All right, so that ends the subject here.